Ladies and gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitt Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like good beer, you'll find it pays to be curious and learn about Schlitz for yourself. again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. As most of us know, teachers are intensely concerned with books. Many of them write books, too. Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, the president of Ivy, is one of these. He finished writing a book early this spring and, with mounting anxiety, has been waiting to learn of its acceptance or rejection by his publisher. At the moment, Dr. Hall and his wife, the former Victoria Cromwell of the English stage, are in the living room of their home. It's shortly past noon. Dr. Hall says, What do you suppose is the matter with Carter? He promised to let me know definitely by the end of the week whether or not he'll publish my book, and here it is Friday and no word from him. There's no point fretting, Toddy. Friday isn't over yet. Well, I suppose I should have known better than to rely on the promise of a man who has all his drinking glasses inscribed with the word whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Why the devil haven't I heard from him? My Aunt Violet always used to say, no news is good news. Well, with all due respect to your Aunt Violet, whose conversation, if what you say is so, must have been exquisitely dreary. <laughs> well, oh, that may be Carter now. Alice Lansford. Good. I'll give him a few moments with Alice first. He deserves it, having kept me waiting so long. That'll teach him a sharp lesson. Oh, she's terrifying, isn't she? <laughs> Well, anyhow, we're just trying her out. She was the best I could do in the way of a housekeeper on such short notice. Oh, I'm not complaining. She's an excellent housekeeper, and she scares the life out of me. <laughs> but I'm sure she must be unique in Carter's experience. I mean, there couldn't be two Alices in the world, could there? Mm, very doubtful. Took 20 years as a master sergeant's wife and five years in the wax to produce even one. To produce Alice at all is a major miracle. <laughs> it's the machine age. She wasn't born... She just came off an assembly line with two trucks and a jeep. <laughs> and shut up! Yep. Oh. <laughs> at ease. Um, at ease, darling. Yeah. Yes, Alice. Someone for the doctor, ma'am. Mr. Carter? Well, I don't know, sir. When I answered, a man at the other end started to stutter. I couldn't make out what. I told him, pop to and sound off, mister. And he said he wanted to speak to Colonel Hall. Uh, I mean, uh... Dr. Hall, fast. Mm. Excuse me, Victoria. I'll see who it is. Uh, he hung up. Hung up? <laughs> yes, sir. He said he had a message for you and tried to pull rank on me when I told him it would have to go through channels. <laughs> well, I chewed him out a little for that. <laughs> and he said, never mind, he'd be right over. Be right over? Well, then he couldn't have been Carter. He's in New York. Well... Carl will be ready in half an hour, ma'am. Oh, yes, good. Uh, maybe a little more than half an hour. I never cook for less than a company full strength. Takes time to divide all my recipes by 200. Oh, well, it's quite understandable, Larry. Yeah, but it's all right. I'll bracket the roast and be on target at 1,300 hours. As you were. <laughs> Frightening. Well, it's almost one o'clock. If Carter intended to publish my book, I'd surely have heard from him by now. Perhaps I should have worked on it another year or so. Oh, nonsense, Toddy. The book is beautifully written. It's one of the most exciting biographies I've ever read. Well, and perhaps the subject's been found uninteresting. After all, Jonathan Gilly was a rather obscure scientist, even in his own time. You know, it's been claimed that the three most fascinating subjects for books are... Abraham Lincoln, doctors, and dogs. 
and that the ideal title would probably be Lincoln's Doctor's Dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, perhaps I should have called mine Victoria's Husband's Hobby. Oh, well, let's wait another hour or so, then we can take a Dr. Hall. Oh, Mr. Merriweather, come in. Come in. Good heavens, man. What? Congratulations. What Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, what for? You mean you don't know? No, what? Oh, sure, let me catch my breath. I ran all the way from the club. I tried to reach you by phone, but that female top kick of yours tried to route me through the Pentagon building. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, no, no, you better make Dr. Hall sit down. Well, sit down, William. Why should I sit down? Because if you don't, this is likely to knock you down. <laughs> I haven't been so happy about anything since my doctor told me to stop working. <laughs> oh, I said it's wonderful. Congratulations. Well, uh, thank you again, but for what? Oh, <laughs> this is marvelous. He doesn't know. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Well, I was in the club library reading my newspaper and listening with half an ear to the radio when I heard the news. <laughs> Wonderful news. Uh, don't let me rush you into revealing it, Mr. Merriweather. No, no, my husband stands always like this, digging his fingernails into his palms and holding back a scream. <laughs> well, ma'am, in the middle of this news broadcast, I heard the name. Jonathan Gilly. Jonathan Gilly? Uh, jo Jonathan Gilly? Yeah, frankly, I wouldn't have known Jonathan Gilly from Ben Hogan's caddy, except that you told me you'd been working on a biography of Gilly for several years now, and uh, you really had better sit down, both of you. Well, we'll take a chance. Go ahead and bowl us over. Uh, Dr. Hall, you won the Schofield Prize. What? What? Well, what's the Schofield Prize? Someone tell me before I start climbing the wall. Well, the, the annual prize for the best biography submitted for publication during the past year. $20,000 prize money, ma'am. $20,000 and the best biography? Oh, Charlie! Oh, Mr. Merriweather, I can kiss you. Go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> I could stand quite still and let you. <laughs> oh, Charlie, I'm so very proud of you. <laughs> and just a few minutes ago, I was fuming at my publisher for not letting me know whether or not he was going to accept the book at all. Oh, yes. he'll publish it all right. He's likely to be selected for the book of the month club. And if this gilly, if this gilly fellow looks attractive in a low-cut gown, you're a cinch for the drugstore reprints. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I... I, I, I don't know what to say. I, uh, <laughs> isn't it ridiculous? My, my little book, the Schofield Prize for the best. <laughs> well, uh, well, the Schofield Prize, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the man said. <laughs> isn't it wonderful? <laughs> this calls for a party. Yeah. Well, of course, we'll have a rouser. And tonight, Mr. Merriweather, we've no time to send out invitations. Will you spread the word around? Certainly. Invite everyone, but everyone. And Vic. Tell Alice to call the market. That little delicatessen, you know. Uh, tell her we want enough for several hundred. This is going to be marvelous. Oh, tonight we'll marry, marry be. Oh, tonight we'll marry, marry be. What do you do with all your money, Doctor? Oh, endow a home for old college presidents. <clears throat> well, for one of them, anyway. <laughs> Get one of those new Scotch plaid dinner jackets. I wouldn't dare wear it, of course, but it'll lend a dashing air to the coat closet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a trip to Europe. Buy a new car. Maybe a compassion. Yes, pet. Uh, Victoria, please, not while we're celebrating. <laughs> hey, Colonel. Uh, Colonel who? Where? Oh, 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 me. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, what is it, Alice? Uh, Mr. Harry Crane calling. Says he's from the Ivy News, a reporter. Oh, have him come in, Mr. Merriweather. Would you be good enough to take care of him while we go upstairs and freshen up a bit? You're glad to, man. Take your time. Yes, come on, Toddy. Uh, we'll only be a moment. Oh, tonight we'll marry, marry me. Dr. Hall? Oh, no, no, my name's Merriweather. I'm on the board of governors. Oh. Now, the halls will be down just a moment. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm Crane of the news. How do you do? Huh. You uh, hear about the Schofield Prize? Yes, yeah, great, isn't it? Uh, great for me, anyway. I'm the local AP man. I make a few bucks extra on it. Oh, that's fine. You used to enjoy your radio program, the... 
A and P gypsies, wasn't it? <laughs> Fine music. Now, now you're thinking of a grocery chain. Uh-huh. I uh, meant the Associated Press. Huh? But about this twenty grand, what's a kid his age going to do with all that folding money? Kid, <laughs> Doctor Hall's not old, but he, he certainly isn't going to spend the money on marbles and lollipops. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about Doctor Hall. I'm talking about that senior here. What's his name? Uh, Buckley, who won the Schofield Prize. Huh? Who? What are you talking about, son? Buckley, Buckley, Jared Buckley. The one who just caught the Schofield Prize with a biography of Jonathan Gilly. Oh, no. No, it couldn't be. Are you sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. It came in on a teletype just a few minutes ago. My instructions are all you can send on Buckley. I'm hoping to get a statement from Dr. Hall to sort of round off the story. Good Lord, what have I done? Set up a Christmas tree and decorated it with mouse traps. Huh? I thought the news broadcaster said it. I, I must have misunderstood. I, I... Will you excuse me, please, Mr. Crane? I don't mm-hmm. want to be here when they come down. Say, you look awful. What's the matter? Headache? Heartache. I really couldn't stand seeing the faces of her. Excuse me, please. Sure, sure. Take it easy. A lot of that virus X making around, you know. Well, if anybody deserves it, I do. Ah, Mr. Crane, good afternoon. I am Dr. Hall. Afternoon, Doc. Victoria, may I introduce Mr. Crane of the news? How do you do? Oh, good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Hall, I won't take up much of your time. I just would like a statement from you on this award of the Schofield Prize. <laughs> well, I, I first heard of it through Mr. Meriwether here, who, who took... Oh, by the way, where is he? Well, he seemed a little upset. He uh, just left. Just left? Oh, that's too bad. I thought he the was going to... The excitement is probably too much for him. Oh, I hope he's well by this evening. I want everyone to feel as happy as I do. Well, you really take this big, don't you? Well, naturally, I, I'm very gratified by the news. Uh, you, you might make that part of the statement. Uh, oh, and please add that much of the credit is due to my wife. Your wife? <laughs> really? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. As a, as a matter of fact, I, I doubt very much if the book ever would have been written without her encouragement and tender solicitude. <laughs> you don't say. Oh, no nonsense. I merely nagged and nagged until the book was finished. I wouldn't stop talking about it. All hours of the day and night. All hours of the... You don't say. <laughs> I promise him that as soon as he's finished, we'd go away together for a whole week. Well, uh, didn't you have anything to say about that, Doc? Yes, of course. Yes, I told her I thought it was a good idea. You don't say. <laughs> was a good idea. Well, yeah, but you've got to draw the line someplace. It was only a week. You certainly are broad-minded. If it was my wife, I'd be frothing at the mouth. Really? If I may say so, it seems a very odd reaction. Not in my circle. And I thought you people led such quiet lives. Oh, well, who am I to point a finger? Well, thanks for the statement, Doctor. You mean? have all you want. Oh, I got even more than I bargained for. <laughs> the story will be about Buckley anyway. This is just sort of fill in and fluff. Buckley? Who's Buckley? Are you kidding? Jared Buckley, the student who just copped the Schofield Prize with his book about Jonathan Gilly. Oh, sorry. Uh, Buckley? He did a biography of Gilly? His biography won the prize? Well, Matt, didn't you know? What did you think I was talking about? I... I, I thought that... It, you see, I... My I, husband has a biography of Jonathan Gilliam in his publisher's hands now. And we were under the impression... No, it's Buckley's book. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, you thought that I was getting a story from you. Oh, this is a rotten break, Doc. I'm, I'm sorry. Holy cow, what a story. No, 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 please. Forget it, please. Right. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Doctor. I... Well, good afternoon, Mrs. Hall. Good afternoon. Um, Victoria, do something for me, will you? Of course, dear. Phone my office and have the Mark Buckley to come here this afternoon. I'd like to see him. All right, Toddy. And Toddy? Yes? I think there must be something dreadfully wrong someplace. Well, things like this can happen to people like you. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. I'm I, I'm glad you think I should be immune to the buffeting of fortune. Uh, 
Uh, but speaking of Buffett, shall we have lunch? <laughs> tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. There's a story behind those words, a story of something pleasant that could very easily happen to you. So before we return to the halls of Ivy, let's find out how a curious golf professional took a lesson from a group of beginners. When you golfers learn something from me, it's all in a day's work. But when I learn something from you golfers, well, that's like the man biting the dog. The man bites dog incident I'm going to tell you about took place shortly after I became the golf pro at an exclusive club in Connecticut. One of my first jobs was to help some new members work on their game. Now, these men were beginners who spent more time in the rough than they did on the fairway. But even so, they enjoyed golf a lot more than some experts I've met. And their enjoyment didn't stop at the 18th hole. I'd see them in the clubhouse after the game, having as much fun as if they'd just broken a hundred. And I couldn't help noticing that Schlitz always seemed part of that happy picture. They always had a good time, and they always drank Schlitz. So I began to wonder if this beer would give me as much pleasure as it gave them. There was only one way to find out. By trying Schlitz. So I ordered a bottle, and I took my first taste. The look that appeared on my face was second only to the look of satisfaction I reserve for photographers on those infrequent occasions when I win tournaments. That look said as plainly as if it had been printed on my face. No wonder Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. We find a saddened Dr. and Mrs. Hall awaiting a visit of Jared Buckley. Is there anything I can do for you, Toddy? Thank you, no, darling. I I hope you don't think I'm crushed by the news, because I'm not. It would have only been a bother to win the Schofield Prize anyway. Yes. Reporters interrupting your routine with requests for interviews. Yes, and having to make speeches at banquets. And radio and television programs. Oh, there's no doubt about it in my mind at all. No, it's just as well I didn't win it. Better, in fact. You're much better. What are you thinking about? I'm trying to decide which of us is the bigger liar. <laughs> I think we're very evenly matched. Give or take a pound or two. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work, does it? I, I must confess I'd love having my routine interrupted. But you'd be inhuman if you didn't. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to surprise you with a fur coat. The prize money, you know. Oh, uh-huh. darling, you are sweet. What a lovely surprise. Thank you very much. I was going to exchange the fur coat for a trip to Europe for both of us. You were? <laughs> oh, thank you, Vicky. Thank you. I, I should have enjoyed that. <laughs> Toddy, how did it happen that Buckley should have written a book on the identical, very obscure subject you did? It was merely a coincidence, of course. Literature is dotted with cases where writers, widely separated in space, have written similar works almost simultaneously. Mm. Mm, reaction to identical stimuli, I suppose. Mm. Uh, yes, Alice, what is it? A uh, telegram for you, Colonel. Thank you. I, um, hope lunch was all right, ma'am. You didn't eat much. Oh, yes, it was baked. Very, very good, Alice. The chocolate in that cake was heavenly. You must give me the recipe so I can pass it on to the other faculty wives. Oh, well, thank you. I learned the recipe at cooks and bakers school in the Army. Now, you take 30 pounds of flour, <laughs> you add three gallons of water and three gallons of milk, then add a smidgen of vanilla extract, not more than a quart. <laughs> now, four dozen eggs, two sacks of sugar. Well, thank you, thank you, Alice. I'll, I'll get it from you later. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's from Carter. Uh, Dear Hall, in view of Schofield Prize Award, we do not feel we can accept your manuscript for publication at this time. Sorry, sincerely, and so on. And that, my love, is that. 
Two years of research and a year of writing right down the drain. Oh, curse the luck. Oh, Tony. Oh, I, I, I mean it. I, when I think of all the hours and days when I was so snowed under with administrative details I couldn't work on the book at all. But for that, it might have been finished sooner. I could have given it more time, made it better. Being a college president and a teacher... That's what hindered me. Oh, please, Toddy. Well, don't... I'd like my name to have gone a little way down to posterity. Could scholars in the future take my book from the shelf and read it? To have extended the domain of knowledge just that much more? I know how hateful it is to be disappointed so cruelly. But living's full of disappointments. Yet we manage to survive and even do very well. It is, I know. Each disappointment always seems the worst. Mm-hmm. What about the time when uh, when I was returning to America after my sabbatical? And you were supposed to go with me and couldn't. Oh, yes. I'd started packing. Yes. You bought the tickets. And we were all ready, I remember. And then two weeks before sailing. While we were dancing at that club. Um, um, what was his name? You remember? It was a new one. It had just opened. Oh, they had a Viennese officer. They must have grown up in Wolfstein. What was the name of that one? I think you waltz beautifully. So do you. <laughs> Is there much waltzing in America? No, not much. When I left, everyone was doing something called the Big Apple. <laughs> oh, Vicky, it's marvelous. Two weeks more, then goodbye, London. Five days later, hello, America. You know, when the customs inspector asks me if I have anything to declare, I shall say, only my love. Toddy. Yes, Vicky. Suppose I couldn't come with you to America. Oh, then. <laughs> then all sorts of dire things would take place. It would rain for 40 days and 40 nights. The ice caps at the poles would move toward the equator. Baseball would be banned. And... Oh, but why imagine such a nightmare? I mean, when you are coming to America with me. But I'm not. What? what? I'm not. I can't. Oh, Toddy, please don't look at me like that. Well, you're not joking, are you? I wish I were. Only I wouldn't make such a joke. Yes, but I don't understand. Well, we were... the management have asked me to change my mind and extend the run of the show until business warrants closing it. But why? Well, if I don't, I'm throwing almost 60 people out of work. I... I couldn't refuse them. Oh, but Vicky, I, I had plans for it. Oh, I... they were beautiful plans, darling. And they'll be fun to carry through. But we'll have to wait a bit. I'll join you later. You see, they all tell me the show can't go on without me. It won't go on for me without you either. Toddy, it wasn't an easy decision to make. Oh, I know. I, I just feel as though the wind had been knocked out of me, that's all. It's been a wonderful trip for you, though, isn't it? Oh, oh, my dear. And it's been happy, hasn't it? Uh I mean, until now? Happier than I ever imagined possible. It's going to make all the days away from you seem very dreary. Uh, I shall feel the same. But don't let's talk about it. We have another two weeks. Let's enjoy them. All right, darling. We'll raise the roof and paint the town red. Because we are two very special people. Special and irreplaceable. <laughs> yes? Colonel, Mr. Buckley's calling. Uh, please, not now. I haven't the time. Who knows how long it'll be before we see each other again. Oh, dear, it's Sheriff Buckley calling. Will you send for him, it makes here? no difference. Every moment with you is precious. Well, thank you. It's very flattering, I'm sure. So what about Buckley? But who? Oh, hmm, what? Oh, oh, Buckley. Oh, Sheriff Buckley. Yes, yes, yes. Have him come in, Alice. Yes, sir. Oh, dear, you were daydreaming again. Yes, there were yes. stars in your eyes. Uh, there was one in my arms as well. Mr. Buckley, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon. Paul. I'm sorry it took me so long. Buckley, we're very proud of you. Congratulations on bringing the Schofield Prize to Ivy. Oh, thank you. I was coming to see you anyway, Dr. Hall. I wouldn't have had this honor if it hadn't been for you. For me? Yes. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have written the darn thing at all. You're responsible for it, you know. I am? Yes, sir. 
Remember that seminar you conducted three years ago? The, the one in American colonial history? Yes. Yes, yes, I do. Well, that's where I first heard of Jonathan Gilly. From you. I'll never forget how you talked about him. <laughs> this convinces me that I talk too much. Oh, well, no, sir. It was, it was wonderful. You discussed him with so much so much enthusiasm, so much fire. I found I couldn't stop thinking about him. Well, the fire must have spread more than I intended. When I when I started doing research, I, I couldn't find half the books I needed. Someone else must have been working on that period of American history. I wouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> and then last year, I decided to write the book. Did you ever write a book, Doctor? That That's a good question. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes, two or three. My best one was, uh, is, unpublished. That's a funny thing. Once I started, I, I got into a sweat for fear someone else would write a book about Gilly before I did. Silly, wasn't I? I mean, I mean, who'd be interested in doing a book about an obscure 18th century scientist? Oh, it might have occurred to someone else. It might have at that. I guess I'm lucky it didn't. Anyway, well, this... This is the original manuscript. I'd be very happy if you'd accept it. It's a sort of a souvenir to remember me by. Will you accept it? Thank you, Buckley. I accept it with pleasure, gratitude, and a touch of envy. That's very kind of you to say that. Is there anything else, sir? No, nothing else. Just congratulations and the wish that this may be only the beginning of a very successful career. Well, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bye, Mr. Buckley. <clears throat> well, Vicky, I'm glad it was Buckley. Nice boy. You're not so bad yourself, Professor. <laughs> no, but, but I'm in the wrong profession, I sometimes think. If I weren't a teacher, I wouldn't have conducted that seminar. And then I wouldn't have brought Gilly to anyone's attention. But garrulous old Hall had to open the gate to his own apple orchard. Teaching bar. Toddy, I think you ought to read this. Hmm? Read what? What Buckley says about you. About me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's the foreword to his book. Oh, well, let's have a look. Hmm. And the Emperor of China said to his ministers, Go search through the land for the wisest of my subjects, he who has the greatest knowledge and the highest ability to use it. And when he is found, bring him to me, and he shall be my advisor and sit at my right hand. And the ministers searched through the land and found him and brought him to the Emperor. And with him came one other. And the emperor welcomed the wisest of his subjects and gave him great honor. But asked the emperor, who is this other one who comes with you? And the wisest of the emperor's subjects answered, this was my teacher. Yes, but go on, read the rest. To William Todd Hunter Hall, teacher, this book is dedicated. You see, Toddy, there's nothing better. What can compare with it? You're a teacher. Yes. Yes, yes, thank God, Vicky. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Here's a note for your date book. Starting Wednesday, May 10th, the Halls of Ivy will be heard on Wednesdays instead of Fridays. And here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night, everyone. Good night. Be sure to see Ronald Coleman's latest picture, Champagne for Caesar. We'll be seeing you next Friday at this time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Ken Carpenter speaking. Incubator Baby's parents appear on We the People next on most NBC stations. Mm -hmm.